Hey y'all, I'm Polly Aringu. I'm a multimedia journalist and the founder of Black Women Photographers, a global community and directory of now over a thousand black women and non-binary photographers from 40 plus countries. Today, I'm sitting down with a few of my favorite photographers who are also members of Black Women Photographers and we're just gonna talk shop. So I'm excited for y'all to enjoy this conversation. So I started Black Women Photographers in July of 2020 with the COVID-19 Relief Fund that raised over 14,000 just crowdsourcing funds on Twitter to help Black women photographers who needed immediate financial relief because of the pandemic. Now a year and a half later, it's just taken its life of its own. There's free portfolio reviews, workshops, trainings, uh, and most recently the grants. Um, and I'm here with some of the members from the community and I want to know y'all, what's your favorite part about being a member of Black Women Photographers? What made y'all join? Uh, so many things, but I think mainly it's to remind myself and ourselves that we are here and we're a big, diverse community of black women in the industry. I think you can sometimes feel a bit invisible because what's projected is a very different picture from what you're seeing. Um, and so I joined because I wanted to be around people who looked like me, who were also photographing and creating a lane for themselves that so I think a lot of people may not exist or doesn't seem feasible. So I wanted to be part of a community um, and to feel seen. Vanicia, how about you? Absolutely, I think we all have similar sentiments. Um, I really just gravitated towards the community aspect of black women photographers. And then having been doing photography for a while myself, I just felt like I was at a point where I was just a little at a standstill and so the organization it really was just like a breath of fresh air especially because there's not many things that exist like this so it really just gave me like motivation and hope that I could you know be successful as a photographer especially as a black woman so yeah it was just very just motivational and the community is everything yeah <laughs> Hi, my name is Vanicia Carswell. I am a portrait and lifestyle photographer. Black History Month is important to me because understanding my foundation allows me to walk forward in my greatness. so beautiful. I mean, that's really just in large part why I created Black Women Photographers, because I remember when I started my own photo journey back in Oregon about like 10 years ago, I didn't know any other Black photographers, let alone Black women photographers, and I really wanted um, that community that you all are touching on, to just that like, okay, I can do this, I can, I can be a Black woman photographer, you know, coming from an immigrant background, you know, I was expected to pursue, ter you know, traditional careers like doctor, lawyer, engineer, of I know y'all understand, like, African. Parents. Listen, like <laughs> photography, journalism. I mean, I totally understand because again, this is just like there's no blueprint to what we're doing, right? Yeah. And you know what you said about just like feeling seen and just like really just realizing that we can do this, like we can be in this field because again, it's so white male dominated and we haven't really had a space, a place for us to be really seen and celebrated in this way. So, I mean, y'all, what y'all just said just really touched me, so I just wanna say that. But um, I'm curious, like how did you all start your own journeys? Like what made you pick up that camera the first time? Um, as my mom would tell it, I had a camera from when I was like a baby, oh. like so little. Um, so in eighth grade, she put me in a IDT tech program, mm -hmm. which was like digital photography and like learning the camera, learning Photoshop. And I think from there, I just decided like, this is what I'm gonna do. Yes. So I went to a high school in Manhattan that has like arts in it, uh, majored in photography, went to college, majored in photography. <laughs> and so I've kind of just been like on this path for a little bit and trying to figure out like, now that I'm in photography, what exactly a part of photography I'm gonna pursue. Mm. Um, so my journey, I think I've always been creative, but like coming from an African family, 
that was not something that was encouraged or just discussed. I didn't really have the language to express it, but definitely in middle school, like whenever there was an event, I was that kid who everyone's like, you're gonna post the album, right? I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and had lots of albums that my family wouldn't go through, but I would go through in my free time. Um, and I think also like, Platforms like Tumblr and Pinterest are also outlets for photographers, and I liked curating these aesthetics. So I was like, I don't know what this is, but I know I'm good at it. I'll stay on Tumblr. <laughs> um, and I go through college, and I have loved documenting my life, but I think once I graduated college and I moved to Swaziland for a fellowship program, as I was kind of going through that, I realized, oh, like I could start a photography Instagram. And that was February 2020, <laughs> right before the pandemic. Um, so through the pandemic, posting really helped me stay connected to people and just like keep creating. And like I said, when I moved to New York, that's when black women photographers became a group. So I think like I'm really happy that this is being recorded because I think that we enjoy so many privileges that so many people had to fight for. And to hear you guys talk about like, oh, I didn't know this was a thing in photography or this was a thing. And like, I feel so blessed to have like literally stepped into a community where I can just like look around and I'm surrounded by that. So that's my journey. And I'm really thankful for Polly for founding it. And obviously for members, like literally me and Vanicia lead meetups in New York. Me and Eno are friends and Eno actually helped me move from Brooklyn to Harlem. <laughs> so really long lasting relationships have been made through this group. That's so beautiful. So, I mean, there's so many common like central points, but I'm really curious as well as like, because we all have similar backgrounds and this fact that, you know, we didn't realize that this was a thing that we could do. We didn't see that representation. So when was the first time y'all came across a work by a black woman photographer that you realized, oh snap, like we are really out here doing this. Like when was that first time? I mean, like, because I'm new, I guess like mine is pretty new. It's when I saw Kennedy Carter shoot Beyonce. Oh, really? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, like what? <laughs> I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> and then I went on her page and she shot Erica Badu. She shot yes. all these other celebrities. Yeah, and I was like, amazing she's doing things. amazing work. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, this girl is my age. At 21, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So, she's so talented. Yeah, I think it's like going back to what y'all were saying about this not, like you didn't know this could be a profession. It's like, one, in 2020, I finally realized, I was like, okay, photography is what I love, but then I'm like, well, what do I do with this now? And so it's really inspiring to see people who found that passion early on and have proven, like, no matter what your age, no matter what your background. I think I also love the fact that she's based in the South. I and was gonna say, no matter where you're based, because people feel like you have to be in the New Yorks or the LA's. Yeah. She's in North Carolina. I love the- North Carolina doing it. So, exactly. Yeah. I think it's really inspiring and it's actually, a reflection of who we are as a community because I've never believed for us to be a monolith. You know, I've grown up in a bunch of different places and have seen black people from all kinds of backgrounds, whether that's in Tanzania. I also went to school in the UK mm -hmm. and then I came here and did my undergrad. So I have seen, you know, very different perspectives of black women and we're so nuanced from, you know, the way we look, the way our hair is, the way yeah. just so many things. And so I think seeing us kind of popping up in different aspects of photography is just, it's a natural reflection of our community. And I find it inspiring because you don't have to just be one thing. We, we don't have to be pigeonholed. Um, and I think sometimes th there can be that weird pressure because we know us, but to maybe people who aren't a part of this community, it's easy to, to think of black people or black women as being a monolith and all having the same interest or all wanting to photograph the same thing. So when you see this kind of eclectic mix of um, people exploring different avenues, I think it's really inspiring and it just kind of opens your own world. You know, you don't have to be in one lane and you can try multiple things too. You know, you can start out doing documentary and then maybe you move into street work or fashion. Um, it's, it's fluid. It's not a, a permanent box that you, you put yourself in. And that's what I really love about photography is you kind of have the freedom to explore so much more than just one category. But yeah, I'd like to add um, just seeing that diversity among our own community, like it just really just shows how capable we are and it really just 
um, encourages us to go further and, you know, we don't have to stick within these limitations, like seeing, again, the representation, like seeing the diversity among ourselves, it helps us unlock like inner passions that we probably have been, you know, holding in because we've only seen, you know, one thing or have been boxed in. But um, yeah, just that capability part is important to me. Hi, my name is Kayla. I'm a fashion and music photographer, and to me, Black History Month is necessary. So how has being a part of Black women photographers impacted you all in your career so far? Um, so when the pandemic started, I had to leave college. Obviously, everyone, everything was like shut down. Um, so I was at home. And Polly, actually, I think you posted it in the channel, this job opportunity at Moment, which I got. And then that was like good that I wasn't like losing income during the craziest time that we've probably ever been through. Um, and then from there, I was recently able to like upgrade my gear and I've met so many different people. I shop for Brooklyn Fashion Week. Um, also, Amazing. someone met me through the channel and reached out. So, and then from that, I've like shot with the director of Brooklyn Fashion Week and kind of snowballed into progressing in my career in a way that I don't think would have been possible if I like didn't have the channel, didn't know these people, didn't meet these people. Wow. Thank you, Kayla. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I could go next because my first paid gig was doing the Black Women Photographers exhibition um, for Photoville's 10th anniversary at Brooklyn Bridge Park. So that was quite the experience. Actually, Eno and Vanisi were both there with me. <laughs> and it was so hot and like there was no there was no real way to like navigate the venue. So I was like running around the whole park looking for this exhibition. I finally found it. People were like sitting close to it and I was like, how am I supposed to get this shot? So I think it just taught me a lot in terms of experience in that way. And I was just really honored to have my first paid gig um, giving back to this organization. But then also very recently after the Instagram Reels conversation, um, I followed the person who spoke to us and she reached out to me about a potential job. So literally just by attending these talks and following people, like you really never know what's gonna happen. So going back to what Kayla said, I really don't think it would have been possible without BWP. And I think it's not only the community building aspect, but it's like, the more people join and the more we invest in it, the more credibility we have. So it's just kind of like a really great feedback loop that we have going on. Yes, that's amazing. It is. It's so, yeah, I love hearing everyone else talk about what they've gotten because I know it's not just me, right? We, we all feel that way. Um, I've had quite a few uh, opportunities from black women photographers. Also the practical skills, you know, learning, I've loved the, the essentials the every, yeah. with the partnership with Everyday Africa or Everyday, the Everyday Projects where we would have different photographers come in and speak to us about just very practical things. And they were so thorough, you know, going through contracts and just things that most people aren't really willing to share. Um, and that's the stuff that I think takes you from, you know, the, the stage of, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm trying to figure everything out and where you can build your confidence to be able to, to pitch ideas to companies or to, to brands. Um, so for me, it's really helped with those practical skills. And also I had actually put on my, my vision board at the beginning of 2020 that I wanted to be part of an exhibition. And I didn't know how that was gonna happen because I've never been in any kind of exhibition. It's just, it's just a dream. And Polly had posted um, an opportunity from Women Street Photographers they were having an exhibition and I was like, you know what? I apply for things all the time. What's one more application? <laughs> you know, let me just throw my name in there. And what was really helpful is that the fees to uh, submit your work were waived. And that's also part of a problem is, you know, there are a lot of fees that go into submitting your work to, mm -hmm. to these competitions. And so I love that black women photographers kind of removes the barriers that, you know, we experience financially or other, other issues. And so I was like, okay, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna submit some images, let's see how it goes. And my photograph ended up being selected for the exhibition. So it was my first ever exhibition and it, for me it was a really big milestone and an opportunity that I wouldn't have gotten if it wasn't for black women photographers. So very wow. grateful. That is incredible. Y'all, y'all are doing it. I'm so proud of all of you. That's amazing. So now that we're actually all in a room together, all of us, I think this is the first time. Do y'all have any questions for each other? Like, how do y'all do what y'all do? Like, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I have a question for you. Okay. I know. So as a fashion photographer, like music, everything I shoot is planned. You know, it's like from like set design to styling, like everything is planned. But how do you navigate shooting like street photography and like capturing that in the moment shot? Mm, good question. Um, I think it takes a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. It's there's a lot of waiting that's involved with it. I I've always been someone who's just very observant. I in the least creepy way. Um, <laughs> I love to watch people and and I think I I'm very slow in the way that I process things. So for me going out and taking photographs is just about kind of waiting to see what happens because there's always something going on and there's always something to photograph but it's just a matter of finding the moment um, and I think everyone works a bit differently um, some people you know would maybe go to one place and stay there for an extended period of time I kind of try different things there are times where maybe I walk the same route for a few weeks and and try and see how my eye sees different things that day or depending on the time of day. Um, so I think it's just about being free and also being patient. There are some days where you may not take any photos or you may not feel inspired. And it doesn't mean that you're any worse than the day that you take maybe the winning shot. Um, but I think I enjoy just seeing what life like what's going on out there and finding a way to kind of insert my, my mind and my eye into whatever's already happening. Hi, my name is Eno. I am a visual storyteller and I work primarily in black and white film. For me, Black History Month is empowering. Right, y'all so it is black history month although we know black history is every day okay women's history month is coming up as well what are y'all working on uh, what does black history month mean to you um i love the recognition that we see during black history month um it just is like a little bittersweet because it can feel like this is our only time for recognition which isn't always like a fun feeling or fair but at the same time it is like really interesting to see the content that comes from it like the documentary that we were just talking about with strong black leads um highlighting uh documentary photographers right mm -hmm. for on netflix so seeing stuff like that seeing you know black love being highlighted seeing black people being celebrated is really beautiful in every facet in photography in film in arts in fashion but it's just if it could happen like more than just in february yeah, that would be like awesome just, days. Right? <laughs> just, <laughs> just a little bit more much. but um it is like still really beautiful to see when it does happen yes yeah, I think Black History Month is just a reminder of the excellence that we are as a people. Um, obviously, you know, as photographers, especially with black women photographers, we make it a goal to emphasize our blackness every single day. But again, like I said, it's a reminder. And why not take advantage of the opportunity to celebrate, highlight ourselves and just continue to push our culture forward? Um, but yeah, I think um, in general, the world, the country is still learning, you know, we're still working through a lot of things. So obviously the month still exists, I believe, for that reason. Um, but again, it, I agree with you. It's like bittersweet. So, yeah. I totally understand. I think um, Black History Month 
it changes so much for me every year, like the impact, because I guess so much recognition is happening every year. And yeah, it is a bit bittersweet and a bit kind of, I don't know how to say it, like conflicting because it's like always in response to tragedies, they want to uplift people. And it's like, these people have been doing the work. But that being said, I think this Black History Month, um, I'm probably the most knowledgeable about black creatives, specifically black photographers. So like really affirming my path and my struggles and my dreams by like honoring the people who came before me and just like even recognizing them because I did not know half of these people. Um, and I'm excited for Black History Month to plan a photo meetup um, for BWP with a locally owned black film store. So I think that's what's going to be really exciting and also just continuing that trend of like investing in our community and we're all on the come up. I love that. Um, you know, I guess on that same note, you know, this is a fresh new year. How do you guys want to see this industry, you know, celebrate us? Like what hopes do you have for this industry to do better, to make sure that, you know, we are being seen, we are being celebrated, that we have real equity within the practice? Um, because, you know, there was a lot of conversations in 2020 and so, and so on. Um, but, you know, I'm done talking, right? I want to see action. And so what action do you want to see within this industry take place? Like if you could tell the gatekeepers that be like, what would you want to tell them right now? What wouldn't I want to tell them? <laughs> um, right? like, how much time we got? I think one thing is for concerted efforts to be more than just for optics and for um, recognition, but to have budgets and to have you know strategic initiatives that are really dedicated to uplifting the communities mm -hmm. that are marginalized or you know hidden is important because i mean we're not stupid we know when things are just done mm -hmm. for attention or for you know recognition and sometimes as much as the opportunities are good to have um i don't think anyone wants to feel tokenized mm -hmm. so it's really important to have you know intentional efforts that go beyond um clout mm -hmm. that's kind of what i would say and I think based on like what you both just said, it's also like, I'm also a philanthropy professional. I do fundraising and talking about like mobilizing resources. It's like, it's not that we're stupid. It's not that like, if we had the proper resources, we would be able to mobilize them f to actualize our dreams. So I think that um, like really investing in communities, but also like what Issa Rae did is taking a chance on new people. Because if you're constantly gonna look at your friends, who are your friends, right? There are people in the, in the industry, people who had opportunities. And it's of course important to collaborate with people you trust, but it's also important to invest in the up and coming talent. So I would love to see um, people follow Issa Rae's example. So what other organizations do you all feel that are really making that impact, that difference in this industry that people should know about? Um, I'm a part of this organization called Girls Who Shoot. And so it's along the same vein, there isn't, um, a Slack channel that I know of, so there isn't like that sense of community that I have within this group, but they are consistently posting job opportunities, um, consistently highlighting different photographers on their Instagram page and like getting those views and like getting their their members seen so that the opportunities can arise. So that's like really interesting to be a part of. And I think you can find so many on Instagram, like just off the top of my head, I'm thinking of Authority Collective, Black Female Photographers, and Diversify Photo, Diversify Photo, yeah. Women Photograph, Black in Film, like there's so many, so. And I mean, like that, which is for me, like why there should be no excuses in 2022, right? Like there's all these different organizations and resources out there. You just have to do the work and find that time to really just research because it's not that we aren't here. I mean, we are all here. We have the talent. And so it's just time for the industry really just to acknowledge that and do more with, with, with the resources that are already out there. The people who are doing the work, you know, day in, day out, it's tireless work that's happening um, with amongst those organizations. And so it's really just time for us to, you know, get our dues. So. Hi, my name is Polly Aringu. I'm a multimedia journalist and the founder of Black Women Photographers. Black History Month to me is not just a month. It's 365 days a year. Every day I am black. Every day I am making black history.
what advice would you have for maybe your younger self and also just someone who is watching this, um, who's younger, who may not have that support system or family support or whatever that's navigating this industry, what you know, advice would you have for them? Um, so this is something that I wish I could have told myself five years ago <laughs> that I'm still trying to tell myself like every day, but honestly, like you are enough, like your work is like valid and what you do is valid and it's, you don't have to like prove yourself to everyone every time you walk into a room because doing something that you love is like valid enough and what you're doing is good. Yes. And just keep going. Yeah. I completely agree with that. I think I would also add, spend some time to think about why you're doing this and to even write that down because there'll be moments that come where you'll begin to question what you're doing and especially on the you know this is it's it's a journey that's fluid it has its ups and downs and there are points where you may feel defeated or you know discouraged because it's a competitive landscape there's a lot that's going on but i think really taking time to figure out why you want to be here and that can change over time, but I think it's important to, to have some sort of inner, inner understanding of what it is that you want to do. You know, now the world of photography is quite trendy um, and there's a lot that can distract you, whether that's, you know, you can get consumed by trying to create a certain image online or to, to be the person that you think people want you to be. Um, but I think once you understand why you're doing what you're doing, you'll be able to stay true to who you are and going along with what you were just saying, Kayla, I think it will make it easier to own, to own who you are and not feel the need to, to consistently prove yourself to others. Right. Mm -hmm. What about you, V? I would say spend time with yourself, learn yourself, um, because there's tons of distractions out here and sometimes it you know, makes us stray away from who we really are or what we're meant to do. But in reality, that intuition that we have, like, you know, we should follow that because even if you feel like you're alone, like you're probably ahead of the game, you know? <laughs> and I realized like, you know, sometimes, you know, I've, you know, held on to certain things that I've, you know, certain ideas or feelings that I've had because of outside distractions or what was the norm or whatever. But like, we have to remember that our path is gonna be different from everyone else's and that it may be lonely initially, but eventually you will find your community and you will realize that the ideas that you have are grand, like regardless of what anybody thinks, like it's unique to you. And if you act on them, like it's gonna develop into something, you know? So yeah, really just listen to yourself, like believe that you know what you're doing. Um, because you have the ideas and you have unique talent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> amen. <laughs> no, truly, I think like we're all kind of going down the same vein. It's like at the end of the day, community is so important, but we're all on our own individual journeys and we're our biggest cheerleaders. So like what you were saying about writing things down, I love journaling because things do get hard and it's like I'm about to hit two years in New York in June and I remember like halfway through last year I'm like why am I here I could be back <laughs> home with my friends and it's like okay I'm here because I know what I want to do and I think you know to quote another great air train American Nipsey <laughs> Hustle, <laughs> you know talking about preparation meeting opportunity and it's like when you're in that preparation zone you might feel like you're not getting any recognition that your ideas aren't worthy to be acknowledged all of these feelings are very normal but all of that preparation, once you get an opportunity, once you join black women photographers, once someone reaches out to you, you need to prepare for that moment and you need to have that in mind. So really knowing yourself, like what everyone was saying, but then also don't get stuck in your present circumstances. Like that's yes. what dreaming is for. Hi, my name is Mikal. I'm a visual storyteller and Black History Month for me means honoring those who have the legacy to allow our generation to dream bigger. I mean, I don't even know what else I can add to you, what y'all said, but I think, I think some, as someone who works in social media by day, you know, the fact that with social media, you only see people's highlight reels, right? 
we don't know what it looks like. I don't know what y'all are doing like off the clock, offline. I don't know what's going on in your day to day, your personal lives, whatever it may be. Um, and so with social media, it's so easy to get wrapped up like, oh, this person is doing this, this person's getting that, like why not me or whatever. Um, and that quote that I really love is the comparison is the thief of joy. And, and so for me, it's like, I, you know, I can't waste my time and energy worrying about who's doing what, whatever. Like for me, I'm trying to be like Beyonce and just like, I am my own competition. Like I'm trying to do myself, like, you know how Beyonce, like, how does she, like, how does she like top herself every year? Like, you know, and then for me, it's like, okay, how can I do that? Like, how can I channel that Beyonce, you know, energy and just like worry about myself or Issa Rae or Quinta Brunson or just like all these amazing like black visionaries that we see today, these black women who are literally like, making history every single day and it's so for me i like i really just admire everybody here because y'all are doing it y'all are making like history like you don't even realize who is watching this who you'll be inspiring to maybe pick up their camera to maybe keep going to maybe realize that you know my ideas are enough like maybe that thing i was thinking about and sitting on i'm gonna go out and do it um you know and so i really just think that this is so important like so thank you guys so much for being here and really just I don't know, talk and shot with me. Like, I hope we can do this again. Yes, we appreciate Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You guys.